Let's please be seated and continue with the opening prayer. God of light and love, you take delight in your creation. Ignite our spirits to worship you with sincerity. Illumine our minds with the truth of your word. Inspire our hearts to seek your treasure alone, that our hearts may be pure and our actions may be noble and just as we share your love. Through Jesus Christ, our hope and promise, we pray. Amen.
Thank you. That was wonderful. Today's scripture lesson is taken from Luke chapter 12, verses 32 to 40. Don't be afraid, little flock, because your father delights in giving you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to those in need. Make for yourselves wallets that don't wear out, a treasure in heaven that never runs out. No thief comes near there, and no moth destroys. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be too. Be dressed for service and keep your lamps lit. Be like people waiting for their master to come home from a wedding celebration, who can immediately open the door for him when he arrives and knocks on the door. Happy are those servants whom the master finds waiting up when he arrives. I assure you that when he arrives, he will dress himself to serve Seat them at the table as honored guests and wait on them. Happy are those whom he finds alert, even if he comes at midnight or just before dawn. But know this, if the homeowner has known what time the thief was coming, he wouldn't have allowed his home to be broken into. You must also be ready because the human one is coming at a time when you don't expect him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everybody. It's uh, nice to be with you. I haven't shared worship with you for a couple weekends, so it's nice to be with you. So just as a point of explanation, um, this (laughs) is a result of spilling tea on myself on the drive down. and so what, what happened basically is I have, because I live so far away, I have an emergency clergy shirt in the closet. So I switched to the emergency clergy shirt, but then my OCD kicked in and it wouldn't allow me to wear the clergy shirt without the collar. So I have the collar on too. So that's why, uh, that's why I look the way I look this morning. Um, and it was 86 degrees in here when I walked in at eight and it's 84 degrees. So um, thank you for braving the hu- or so, thank you for swimming over here in the humidity. Um, so one of the things you don't know about me, because there'd be no reason for you to know this, is that I have high cholesterol. Um, luckily, I get to go for a blood test every year to uh, keep my insurance premiums down, and I have high cholesterol. Turns out that I have high cholesterol because um, I inherited it from my mom's side of the family. My mom has high cholesterol, her four sisters have high cholesterol, her brother has high cholesterol, and all my cousins in my generation have high cholesterol. So we have them to thank for that. But my mom found out about high cholesterol a long time ago, probably back in the 70s. And she went, she, so she went to the doctor and they, you know, the doctor told her this. And if you don't remember, back in the day, we didn't have a lot of hot, cholesterol medications, right? And because it was um, essentially fat circulating in your blood or some variation of fat, there was this idea that there was much more, a a closer tie to your diet. Remember that? When you had high cholesterol. And so that really, before medications, that really was the prescription for dealing with high cholesterol is you needed to change your diet. Now, I think since then we have learned um, that it isn't quite that simple, right? I mean, you just can't change your diet and and magically lower your cholesterol, that there's a lot of other things, including genetics that are part of that. But at the time, my mom got that diagnosis. And so one of the things the doctor told my mom to do was to cut out shellfish because shellfish is high in cholesterol. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. That's what they told my mom. Now, the thing you have to know about my mom is my mom loves shrimp loves shrimp. There was a steakhouse about 15 minutes from where I grew up on Route 46 in New Jersey. I don't remember the name of the steakhouse and my dad loved steak. But in the 70s, this steakhouse was advertising all you could eat shrimp, all you could eat peel and eat shrimp. Okay. And if I had been a teenager, then this probably would be embarrassing. As it was, I was a younger kid. And so I didn't really think about it. But my mom would go to the steakhouse and no lie, 
my mom would, would have two full dinner plates of shells stacked up like this. Like if I had been a teenager, I would have been embarrassed. Now it's just a funny story. But my mom could eat so much shrimp. It was, it was crazy. Okay. So the doctor says, you got to cut out, you got to cut out seafood. So my mom says, okay. So she cuts out shrimp for a year goes back to the doctor, has her blood tested again. And lo and behold, her cholesterol level goes up, right? Goes up because it, that relationship isn't that, isn't that tight. And so in my mom, in my typical my mom fashion, my mom says, well, the heck with it. If, if that isn't going to do anything, then I'm just going to go, I'm just going to continue eating shrimp. And so my mom started eating shrimp again and just didn't care, basically didn't care until eventually cholesterol medicines came out and now that's how she controls it. But it reminds me, you know, as I've been growing up and we've all grown up in this period of time when nutrition, nutrition science, diet, all those things have been, have become much more in the forefront of how we put together our picture of health now, right? I mean, when I grew up, I mean, I had TV dinners, SpaghettiOs. I mean, nobody was like, oh, that's not healthy for you right? White bread, everything, right? Now, now what do you get? Now you get, if you read any of that, if we're all the age that we probably care about this stuff, right? Okay, blueberries, because that puts off macular degeneration, right? Walnuts, because it's unsaturated fat, and it's got magnesium and helps brain health. Fish, it's got omega-3, but don't eat too much fish. And don't eat the farm fish. You got to eat wild fish, but not too much because there's mercury in the ocean, you know? Um, you get all this, all these, these dietary directives, right? And basically at the end of the day, you'd have to eat like 10,000 calories to eat everything that they're telling you to eat in order to be healthy. And I don't know about you, but what happens to me is, you know, as I read it, as I see it on the internet, every, you know, everything's got an angle, no meat, vegetarian, no red meat, more fish, more pork, more chicken, no chicken, more steak. Ah, nah, 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 nah. Eventually, right, I get the Charlie Brown elementary school teacher, right? Wah, 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 wah. Right? I get the buzzing. Because what happens is there's too much. There's too much of somebody telling me what to do, right? If I was a teenager, or if you remember your teenage years, or you remember raising your teenager at some point, right? Your teenager said, stop telling me what to do, or you said it to your parents. If you give too much, too much direction, too much instruction, too much you have tos, eventually what happens is we start tuning it out. It becomes overwhelming. Right. So I get it. You can you can tell me all day about the benefits of blueberries and strawberries, the benefits of fish. Right. And I get it. I got the facts. I know. But if you keep telling me and telling me and telling me you should eat, you should eat, you should eat, you should eat. I just I tune you out. You're just noise to me after a while. And I think that as people of faith. That happens to us when we talk about our faith journey, when we talk about our faith life. From the beginning, right? Okay, so we're getting the beginning, beginning, 10 commandments were told. First off, I mean, and little did you know when you were in Sunday school and got the 10 commandments, that, that was only the beginning. You were going to get a whole lot of other commandments, okay, that were going to show up in your Sunday school. It's going to show up when you read scripture, was going to be in your book studies. You were get somebody like me to tell you every Sunday what you should be doing, what you shouldn't be doing, right? And even in Western Christianity, where we've come from this culture of Catholicism, right? There's this whole, right? I mean, we all know the whole guilt picture about what we should and shouldn't be doing, right? Lent, you should be giving up something. And we're always told, you should do this, you should do that, you shouldn't do this, right? Jesus does it, right? You should be feeding the hungry. You should be clothing the naked. You should be healing the sick. You should be visiting the prisoner. It seems like the Bible and scripture is full of commandments. And then on top of it, you've got me telling you that stuff. So after, 
however many years you've been in a member of the community of God, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, whatever you've been here, what do you hear? You hear Charlie Brown's teacher. You know it, right? My hope is, is that when I'm up here preaching, my hope is, is that I give you something to think about. I pose things in a different way. I ask you questions. I hope you, this challenges you. I hope it helps you grow. But my hope is, unless you are a visitor here, then I'm not telling you anything new. Heard it all. Probably been through the scripture. If you, if you have a lectionary pastor, you've probably been through the scripture in your lifetimes, probably... 10 times through the scriptures. This shouldn't be new. You know what I'm going to tell you. It's just how I tell you. But I think it becomes buzzing. I think it becomes buzzing. I think that we start to ignore it. It starts to be normalized. We start to not hear it. Or we start to hear it in a way that makes us feel bad about it. It becomes a to-do list. And I don't know about your to-do list is I have things on my to-do list that go back years that I have not gotten to, okay? It just becomes, a, it, it goes on my to-do list. Oh, I should pray more. I should read my scripture more. I should give more money to the food pantry or the church. I should, I should, I should. Ends up on my to-do list. Never to see the light of day. It's what happens. It's what happens when I harp on you about all the things you should or shouldn't be doing. That's what it happens. This morning, scripture, though, has an interesting way, a different way of looking at our faith. It's printed in your bulletin or it's in your Bible if you're online or whatever the case is, right? But the first paragraph starts off. It said, your father delights in giving you the kingdom. Not God the Father wants to give you the kingdom. Not God the Father is happy or is cool with or any of those things. But God the Father, your creator, the thing that breathed, broke breath, breathed, breathed life into you, delights in giving you the kingdom. And so rather than a to-do list, Right? And we have this funny thing, right? Remember the what would Jesus do things and all those things, right? It always gave it, sort of giving us the impression that this was like a hundred question quiz. To get to the kingdom, you had to complete this hundred question quiz. And you not only that, but you needed a hundred percent on it. That's what it seemed like. But God the Father delights in giving you the kingdom. Rather than a hundred question quiz, all essay, it's a one question, yes or no quiz. It's a one question, yes or no quiz. And the person who's administering the test is sitting next to you, whispering the answer to you. Do you have faith in my son, Jesus Christ? Do you have faith in my son, Jesus Christ? And God, the father is sitting there poking you in the side with his elbow and saying, the answer is yes. Just check off the yes and you pass because I delight in giving you the kingdom. I want you in the kingdom. I want to save you. I want you to be there in eternity. And so sometimes I think we forget that. Our faith becomes very dry. Our faith becomes not, not inspiring, not life-giving. It doesn't make us feel good. It's our to-do list. And nobody really feels good about their to-do list. It's an obligation. Come on Sunday and worship, read my scripture, pray, give money. And it all seems like an obligation. It all seems like an obligation when it really is inheriting our creator's kingdom. Being beloved. 
being so regarded that God didn't want to imagine a forever without you. That's the start. And then our scripture this morning goes on a little bit further. It goes on a little bit further, and it's really easy to miss it because I miss it. I miss it because once I start reading a Bible story, and if I know or I think I know how it ends, I just, I know what, I get it. I fill in the blanks, right? This story starts off with the, you should be ready. You should be ready for the coming of our master. We're the servants. We're taking care of the house. And our master is at a wedding ceremony. We don't know what time our master is coming. So we should always be ready. We should be vigilant. We should be prepared. We should be there with his robe, his slippers, his pipe, and his martini. And I know the rest of the story. I can tell you the rest of the story. Why? Because the story is that we should be ready for Jesus. We should never take it for granted. We should always be diligent about our preparation and our faith journey. And that is not what this scripture says. You got it wrong. If that's where you jump to, like how I jumped to it, you got the scripture wrong. The scripture says, is that we're there, and as soon as the master comes, he's going to change his clothes, and he's going to seat us as honored guests, and he's going to serve us. Weird, right? I've got God the Father, God the Creator, who delights in giving me the kingdom, and I've got his Son, who's waiting to treat me as an honored guest and to serve me. And yet we treat this life of faith as one of drudgery and one of obligation, one of to-do lists, when it is a celebration that we are claimed by God, by faith, in Jesus Christ. You've got the simplest test to pass. Do you believe in my son, Jesus Christ? Yes or no? The answer is yes. And enter into the delight of your father. We lose sight of that. We lose sight of how life-giving our faith is, of how inspiring our faith can be to ourselves, to our families, to the people around us. Yeah, if I was only preaching about a faith journey that was one of obligation and work, yeah, it's pretty hard to go out there and talk to anybody about how you want to join us, about how you want to come to know the God that we know, about the good news. It's hard to invite somebody here just to put some more on their to-do list. But it's not that. God the Father delights in giving you the kingdom. And his son, on his return, comes to serve us as honored guests. And the Holy Spirit, the third person we haven't talked about, the third person there to an open and willing spirit and heart, gives that gift of faith gives that gift of faith. And so this morning, I want you to wipe away all that tendency to look at our faith as an obligation, a job, a mission, a whatever. And just remember, as you're going through life, as you're trying to do the best you can, the best you can at your life, the best you can as a disciple, the best you can, whatever the case is, right? None of those are on the quiz. It's not how much money you gave to the food pantry on the quiz. It's not how many people you helped. It's not how many people you prayed for. You should be doing it. But that's not how you get the kingdom. Do you believe in my son? Because he's ready. He's ready to embrace you. He's ready to love you. He's ready to welcome you into heaven.
into the kingdom. And all it takes is faith. And I've given you that too, if you are willing and open. So let us rejoice in that. That our faith isn't always about what we have to do, the tasks, the means of grace, but that God wants us, delights in us to be in the kingdom. Let us rejoice and be glad in that this day. Amen. Our next song this morning is Seek Ye First the Kingdom of God from the United Methodist Hymnal number 405. We always have an opportunity to come together as a congregation and people of God to recognize the way that God loves us, the way that God has appeared in our lives, the way that, um, the way that we're thankful for prayers answered, and to raise prayers of need, to recognize the way that we are still relying on God's grace, God's mercy, God's justice for a lot of the situations in our lives. So at this time, I would invite you, um, is there anybody that has any uh, joys, any prayers of thanksgiving, any God sightings, anything they would like to share before God and the congregation this morning. Yes, Jerry. Oops. Oh. oh, sorry. Sorry, I got it. I, yeah, I'm out of. Uh oh. There you go, Jerry. Sorry. Sandy and I. Oh, I don't know. How to... Sandy and I worked at the kids' closet that uh, helped out passing out the uh, um, school supplies. And what a joy it was to see the uh, looks on the faces of the kids. It was funny. The young kids were just overjoyed. The older kids were bored to death. But <laughs> but that's the way it goes. But it was really great and kudos to the ladies that organized it and everything. Boy, it was a nice uh, run operation and uh, I think very successful. And we had a, a, a great time doing it. And thank, thank God it wasn't today, huh? With the yeah. weather. It was hot though. <laughs> oh, amen. That's awesome. Thanks be to God for that. I have a concern. Okay, you might as well shoot. Um, yeah, we're, we're going later to the wake of a very dear friend, Steve Eckert. So please keep Steve's fa family in your prayers. He's a great guy and he'll be missed. And it's just very, very sad. So thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Joys, concerns? Hmm? Um, yes, I'm very thankful that the Haman and Smith families just got back from Minnesota, our annual vacation. All the children and grandchildren still go up there. They all enjoy it. The first week, Julie, Devin, and Hayden stayed with me. They're the Smith family. And then, and I have a 
three, three bedroom log cabin. And so the second week, Jeff, Gina, Jacqueline, and Grace stayed with me. And Jim and Katie and Caleb and Aubrey were there also. So we had the entire family enjoy and had a fish fry. It was wonderful. I love the walleye. Oh, yeah. Wow, awesome. <laughs> so it, it doesn't taste like fishy fish. Right. So yeah, it's right. wonderful. And tomorrow, the 8th of August, we're going to be celebrating Aubrey's 8th golden birthday. So tomorrow at their house, 8th, uh, oh, August 8th. Yeah, golden Jeez. birthday. Got yep. It. All right. Wow, so, amen. That's awesome. Thank you very, very much. Cool. Thanks be to God. Others, boys, concerns? Yep. <laughs> I took my driver's test yesterday. And I passed it with one little mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I have to do it every year now. Uh, so it, it went well. Awesome. <laughs> Yay. I'm thankful to God for that. That's awesome. Others? Yep. In our order of importance, uh, Robin Griswold is health is improving. Uh, she is doctoring and taking long walks every day and says she's doing better and better every day. Secondly, uh, Honey the dog is with a neighbor and is in good care because Honey has a playmate there. And lastly, uh, my perfect children give you an update. You know they're perfect. They don't live with me and they don't ask me for money. <laughs> Well, my favorite son, who's in Michigan, claims he's coming to visit later this month, and uh, we're looking forward to get together. And he's my favorite son because the other child is a daughter. Okay, <laughs> probably I'm probably not going to touch any of that prayer, other than to point out that you did say order of importance, and Honey the dog was second, and the kids were third. That, hmm? So we can strike that out of the recording for a donation. <laughs> other, other joys and concerns today. Okay. Uh, all right, if you would please pray with me. Gracious God, what a joy it is to be called one of your children that you delight in giving us heaven, giving, giving us your kingdom and ask so little from us, just faith, belief in your son, Jesus Christ and what he did here on earth. God, we're thankful to be called your children. We're thankful that you give us new life. We're thankful that you make us whole, not just giving quiet, the way sometimes we use the word peace, but giving us wholeness of knowing who we are and whose we are, of knowing our purpose, of being in relationship with you, your son, and your spirit. God, in this week, we have had many joys, joys that we voiced here and joys that we have kept on our heart. But whatever the joy, we know that goodness in our creation, in this creation, flows from you. That we can love because you loved us first. That we can show mercy because you showed us mercy. That we can be just and fair because you are just and fair. And so we give you thanks for all the things that we have given voice to and all the things that we have on our spirit. We give you thanks. God, at the same time, we know people that have needs, needs of comfort, needs of mercy, needs of help, friends that mourn the loss of loved ones, people that we're praying for on their traveling journeys, People that struggle, that are struggling to put enough food on their tables, to have a roof over their heads. Those that live 
under the specter of war or the threat of war. Those who have suffered violence or loss. God, we know that this is not the way you want things. So until the day comes when your son returns and we see your kingdom in its full glory, God, we pray your mercy and your love on all those this day that need an extra measure of it. We know that you love all. And we pray for all those who need to know it this day. We pray all this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are, uh, for those people online, we are going to do communion today. So um, if you have a prepackaged cup that you've received from us, you can, you're welcome to go get that. If you do not, you are welcome and invited to go get some bread and some juice from um, your kitchen. And we will pray God's blessing on all the gifts um, as we do communion. But our next song uh, first this morning is Light of the World from the Faith We Sing, hymnal number 2204. Um. We begin our service of Holy Communion um, is printed uh, in your bulletin, or um, if you are using a United Methodist hymnal, we are starting on page 12. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. You are always invited in response to God's word and worship to um, make offerings of your time, your talent, and your material blessings that you have been made stewards over. Um, if you are here, you are invited to leave any offerings in the offering plates outside. Um, if you are online, you are always invited to email your offerings to the appropriate church office. Let us continue now on page 15 of our hymnal. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right. 
and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. When nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us, gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in his final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of God, of children of God, let us pray the prayer Jesus taught us, each saying in their own tradition, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us as we forgive those and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf. We who are many are one body because we partake of the one loaf. The bread in which we break is a sharing of the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing of the blood of Christ. Friends, this table is set. It is not a United Methodist table. It is not a congregational table. It's God's table. And all who seek to know God and to be in communion with all his children are welcome here. 
Um, if you are online, you are welcome to partake of your elements uh, whenever you wish. If you are in the congregation, I will walk around and hand you a uh, hand you a, a pre-filled cup. Here, please join me in prayer. Most bountiful God, we give you thanks for the world you have created, for the gift of life, and for giving yourself to us in Jesus Christ, whose holy life, suffering and death, and glorious resurrection have delivered us from slavery to sin and death. We thank you that in the power of your Holy Spirit, you have fed us in this sacrament, united us in Christ, and given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. We are your children, and yours is the glory now and forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is, Since Jesus Came Into My Heart, verses 1, 2, and 3, from the faith we sing hymnal number 2140. <laughs>
Now, as we go from this place to be God's people, receive this blessing. Go forth in faith with your lamps lit, dressed for action. Through us, Christ offers love to the world. Go forth to be a blessing to everyone that you meet. Amen.